Hey guys, Psyche here. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be going over the agar recipe I like to use and uh, the few ingredients uh, you're going to be needing. Uh, I will also leave that in the description below so you can find it for yourself. So first of all, I like to use some uh, mason jars and I like to use the small mouths. Uh, makes it easier for pouring the agar later. I also use 500 milliliters of boiling water. You can use a pot or a kennel like this to get your water to boil, totally fine. You're gonna need also agar powder and you're also going to need some light malt extract. I like to pre-weigh everything, that way it's just much easier to mix. The recipe I'm using here is calling for 15 grams of the light malt extract and 10 grams of the agar agar powder. Also, um, I'm going to divide this recipe into two containers, so I'm going to half everything. The reason for that being is I just wanted to use some different colors uh, to color code my agar. Sometimes I like it for labeling later on. I also recommend uh, starting to heat up your water before measuring everything. So by the way, by the time the water is hot, you're pretty much done. Also make sure you have your um, filters for your lids as well if you don't have some already. The reason I like to use hot water is just because everything dissolves a little bit easier. I also start by making this kind of swirling gesture with my hand and I'll add in the light malt extract first. The reason being, um, sometimes it clumps up as well outside, maybe it's because of the moisture in the air, but regardless I like to have it sit outside as least as possible. So it goes in first and then I reduce the chances of clumping. So I'll just keep on uh, swirling my hand until everything gets dissolved throughout and uh, I'll repeat the same thing for the second jar. Alright and uh, here's where I will be adding my food coloring. Enjoy! Welcome back. Okay, so we're pretty much all done. Everything's mixed through. Now the most important thing anytime you're using jars and about to pressure cook is to wipe the lip of the jars. That is going to be the only place uh, that still has risk for contaminants even through the pressure cooking. So you really, really want to make sure uh, you rubbing alcohol, wipe the lip. And then now we're going to be using some aluminum foil. The reason being we have uh, filters on these jars and you want filters on the jars because you don't want things to kind of uh, explode and shatter in there. And the aluminum foil is to block uh, any water droplets from hitting the top of our jars and possibly uh, hitting our filter and then going into uh, the mixture itself and then that could actually bat off balance things uh, a little bit. So we're just going to make sure it's all nice and wrapped up and we're going to load our pressure cooker. Okay, so I just wanted to show real quick the water level. Sometimes people struggle with that, sometimes it's too much, too little. I like to go kind of like, if, you, if you're in doubt, go on the higher side because if you go on the lower side and your water runs out, you're just ruining everything. So you kind of want to go about a third of the way up the jars. And we're going to be pressure cooking for 40 minutes once it reaches that 15 PSI. So you want to get uh, on the stove 15 PSI once it reaches that you lower your heat to medium high and you let it sit for 40 minutes. Once the 40 minutes is up you turn your stove off and set a timer for 2 hours and that is when you should be ready to pour your agar. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Saki out. 